I've gotten some fantastic questions recently asking about what is it like to participate in an MS clinical trial. I'm going to discuss that topic in this video, so don't turn away. It starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. I am particularly excited and proud to bring the option of clinical trials in MS to families right here in Central Ohio. And in this video, I want to share with you a little bit of what it's like to participate in a clinical trial. Now, this is the second in a series of videos on the topic. And so if you missed Clinical Trials 101, I'll throw a link right there and you can check that out. But with no further ado, let's jump in. Who's right for a clinical trial? Each trial has very specific inclusion and exclusion criteria. So, for example, they may be looking for humans that are between the ages of 18 and 55. So they're not accepting people younger than 18 or older than 55. And so there'll be certain criteria. For example, they may be specifically looking for people with primary progressive MS, not relapsing MS. And the doctor running the trial at that clinic is going to know the specific inclusion exclusion criteria. And if it looks like that might be something viable, there may be a discussion about, hey, would you like to hear about this? And if the answer is yes, we may invite that human to come into the clinic, not through an insurance visit, but through the clinical trial. Now, the first thing that happens before any testing is done at all is consent. The consent process is super, super important. That's the opportunity to share the good, the bad, and the ugly, all the possible potential risks. It's a really important moment. And if the patient feels comfortable and signs consent, they then may participate in a screening visit. Now, the screening visit is really a very formal way of sorting out, does this human uh, qualify for participation in the trial? There'll be a lot of discussion about history of the MS, ensuring up understanding of other medical ailments and medications that you're taking. There's a lot of neurological testing, neuro exams and neuro testing and all of this kind of stuff and the walking. We'll check vitals and do other exams, heart, lung, belly, etc. There's a lot of blood typically which is taken. Typically, there will be MRIs to obtain, EKGs to obtain. Sometimes, depending on the trial, special eye exams or special uh, evaluations by dermatologists, etc., etc. So all of this important information is collected and sent to the sponsor to determine whether that human being screens into the trial or doesn't screen into the trial. The human is then invited to come in for the randomization visit. And this is where behind the scenes, the study sponsor will randomly assign that particular human in the context of the trial to receive study drug or the active comparator, or in a placebo trial, study drug versus the placebo. But they don't tell the patient that, and they don't tell uh, the primary investigator, the, the research doc that. We don't know that. But they clarify that in a hidden fashion, and they tell the site dispense this particular medicine, bin number A982-7, whatever. And the patient comes in and takes that medicine and they've now initiated, they've done the randomization. And there is a very strict schedule of events. Some trials, the patient comes in once a month. Sometimes in a clinical trial, the patient may come in once every three months. But what's really cool in a trial is they know ahead of time, on the first day of the trial, every single date they need to come in. They're all pre-planned. So on a given day, there'll be a neurological examination. On a given day, there'll be a discussion with the doctor. There'll be labs that are typically drawn. Some of them will include MRIs. Some of the study visits can last maybe a half an hour if you're just drawing labs. Some of the study visits may last several hours. They're typically always covered by the sponsor, so they're not something that's run through your insurance. And you always see your research doc, so your clinic doc, but then you also see other clinicians involved in the trial. At our center, you would see our nurse practitioner who would be doing a blind evaluation, doing a neuro exam without getting into how you're doing. Her role in the trial is to be blinded, to not know how you are, just to collect the information. And so throughout the course of the trial with the schedule that's set, you'll be coming in for these study visits. They're called scheduled visits. And typically, they're about every month to every three months for the duration of the trial, which is typically about two to three years in duration. Now, 
if there are any issues, God forbid you have an attack, or we think you're having an attack, we would bring you into the clinic for uh, an evaluation called an unscheduled visit. And it would be covered in the context of the trial, and we would evaluate you for infection, we would evaluate you for an attack, and if we identify that, we would treat you. Now, at the end of the trial, when patients complete the period of time, the two or three years, they're oftentimes offered something which I think is really cool, called an extension arm. So in the context of the clinical trial, you're either on drug A or drug B, and maybe this is the study drug, and this is the standard of care drug, but you don't know which one for two to three years. At the end of the trial, we unblind. So we find out, hey, you are actually on study drug, or hey, you are actually on the active comparator. But then you can enter into an extension arm where everyone gets the study drug. So the folks that were on active comparator now get to take the study drug, and the folks that are on study drug get to continue. And it's done in an open label fashion, meaning that everybody knows what you're on. It's not a secret. And they follow you again with study visits that are typically every three months or six months or something like this. And you're given the drug for free and they monitor your safety and efficacy. And that's an awesome thing to get to do oftentimes as a person with MS who's responded well to the study drug because that drug's not yet available um, through commercial means. And so you have a unique opportunity to continue. So I just wanted to spend a little bit of time sharing with you the experience what it's like participating in a clinical trial. To the human, it should feel kind of like a very long clinic visit where you're talking to your doctor, you're being examined, you're having testing done, whether that be labs or EKG, you're periodically getting MRIs and you're receiving medicine. But you're doing it under the, under the context of a clinical research experiment, which ultimately will answer really, really important questions and hopefully bring new options to market. I want to say thank you to folks that participate in clinical trials research, because if it wasn't for their participation, we wouldn't have any drugs to offer my patients in clinic. If you'd like to learn more about clinical trials and research in general, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next video, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, be safe and take care.